In this video series, we'll go together through a free book, Learn Haskell by Building a Block Generator. I think it's an excellent resource for starting your Haskell journey. If you have not heard of the book and are not a fan of learning through videos, feel free to switch to the text directly. We will implement a tiny HTML printer library, define and parse our own custom markup language, read files and glue things together, add command line argument parsing, write tests and documentation. In each chapter of the book, we'll focus on a particular task we wish to achieve and throughout the chapter, learn just enough Haskell to complete the task. So why should you read this book or watch this walkthrough? There are probably more, but here's a few possible pros. It's relatively short. This book, when exported with PDF, is roughly 200 pages long. And it's project-oriented. In this book, we build a Haskell program and learn Haskell on the way. The book touches on important topics, such as design patterns, testing, and documentation. It has many exercises as well as solutions to those exercises. We're gonna do those together. It's online and it's free. Author mentions a few cons as well. They said that the book lacks depth and does not cover as many features or techniques. But I don't think these are disadvantages. Quite the opposite, it's for good. Haskell can be overwhelming and limiting the scope is a great idea. You can always dig deeper when needed. We'll create a simple HTML Hello World program and use the Haskell toolchain to compile and run it. First, you need to get the Haskell toolchain running. TLDR, you need to install one tool, GHC app, which takes care of all the required Haskell tooling, GHC, Cabal, Stack, Haskell language server, We'll cover this throughout the course, but feel free to discover and play with them on your own. A Haskell source file is composed of definitions. The most common type of definitions have the following form. Note that names must start with a lowercase letter and we cannot use the same name more than once in the file. A source file containing a definition of the name main can be treated as an executable and the expression that main is bound to is the entry point to the program. So let's create a new Haskell source file. We've defined a new name main and bound it to the expression put string line and given string. So this body of main means that we call in function put string line with the string, which is this HTML, as an input. The put string line takes a single string as an input and prints that string to the standard output. We don't need the parentheses to pass arguments to functions in Haskell. From my experience, if you're coming from other languages, it might be quite unclear and weird at first, but then you get used to it. Not that we cannot just simply write this because it's not a definition. Free float expressions like this are not allowed out in Haskell. To run this little program, we can compile it using the command line program GHC. Invoking GHC with our file, we'll create the following artifact files. Object file, Haskell interface file, and a native executable file. So let's run the executable. Alternatively, we can skip the compilation and creation of all the artifact file phase and run the source code directly using the command line program run GHC. We can also redirect the output of the program to a file and then open it in the favorite browser of choice. The author recommends using RunGHC with the whole tutorial. While Compiler produces significantly faster programs, interpreting programs like this provides us with a faster feedback while we are developing and making frequent changes. We can define the HTML string pass to the put string line function in a new name instead of passing it directly to the function. Note that the order in which we declare the bindings does not matter. We can easily move this declaration above or below. It doesn't matter. So yeah, this is it for the first part and the first chapter, if you count from zero. Welcome on board. Check out the next part where we're gonna be building an HTML printer library.